In this video, we're going to go over how to use Pulse Wave Doppler, and I'm going to be using the left ventricular outflow track uh, VTI measurement or velocity time interval measurement as an example of how to use Pulse Wave Doppler. So, the first thing you want to do is actually just get a good 2D image of whatever structure you're going to be uh, measuring. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a great uh, five chamber view here, but it's good enough where we can demonstrate how to do the pulse wave doppler measurement. So here we got the 2D image. And the next thing you wanna do after you get the 2D image is you're gonna push this pulse wave doppler button and whatever machine you're using will have a, uh, either it should say doppler or pulse wave doppler. And when you push that, this cursor line will come out with this sample gate right here and you can adjust this cursor line to the left and right of the screen, as well as uh, the sample gate up and down that line itself. So um, bring your sample gate right to the area where you wanna measure. And here you see we're bringing it down right where that five chamber is. This is the aortic valve down here. And once you have the area that you want to measure, you can push the pulse wave Doppler again here and then it will actually activate the pulse wave Doppler settings. So the first time you push it, it'll only come up with the cursor and the sample gate. And the second time you push it, it'll actually activate the pulse wave Doppler. So here, when you activate it, you'll notice that it'll uh, give you the tracing. And the reason the tracing is going downward is because the flow of uh, blood is going from the left ventricle down towards the aorta. Uh, and that's why you're detecting a downward flow over here. And now we're gonna go over how to kind of optimize the settings of your pulse wave Doppler to uh, give you the best chance of giving you the best measurements. So after you uh, push the pulse wave Doppler, you get this tracing. And what you see I'm doing here is I'm pushing the gain button. That's the first thing I adjust is the gain because sometimes you might be missing signals that are actually a little bit, um, uh, there's, a, there's another signal that you might be missing if you don't optimize your gain. So here, you're gonna see I'm gonna increase my gain a little bit, and you see how that kind of clears up this tracing for you here. And after you optimize your gain, you can adjust, this is called the baseline, this line right here. And if you're uh, measuring a structure that has flow that's going downward, um, then you wanna bring your baseline up so you can see more of a downward tracing. Uh, conversely, if you're using uh, or measuring a tracing that is going upward, you want to bring your baseline down to uh, enable you to uh, get the best view of your measurements. So here we're just bringing the baseline up, okay? And after that, you bring the, after bringing the baseline to where you need it to be, the other thing you should adjust is your scale. So just push the scale button here, and what you'll notice is this scale corresponds, this is 3.3 meters per second. And this will correspond to, if you look over here, um, the, the amount of meters per second that it's actually measuring. So if we, for example, I'm going to decrease this scale here, you see, uh, and now this brings the tracing, it looks a lot nicer. We're actually using the whole screen versus just that small area that we were before. So adjust your scale to the proper velocities that your, um, that your application is, is using there. So after you adjust the scale, uh, there's one more thing you can adjust that people oftentimes forget, and that's called the sweep speed, okay? So here you see this, when I pushed on the sweep speed, the first number came out was four. So that means it's measuring four seconds worth of uh, tracing on the uh, x-axis right here. So you see here, four seconds right here. Um, and if I decrease it, so you see here, I'm going down to 16 seconds uh, of sweep speed, and it's measuring now 16 seconds. So you're gonna get a lot more tracings in this one view. However, the tracings, you might not be able to see them each one as well, but sometimes if you are, you need a lot of tracings or if you're looking for like respiratory variation in your velocity time integrals, you wanna have a uh, large amount of tracing, uh, large amount of tracings. Um, however, we can also uh, increase the sweep speed right here all the way up 
and now it just has one second, right? So here, the sweep speed is, is, is so high that you're only seeing like literally one tracing uh, at a time. And I really rarely go this high up on my sweep speed um, because I'm, it's, it's hard to see just one tracing and try to, try to get a good sense of uh, the rest of the, the, the measurements. So for this uh, application, I would probably do around six uh, seconds. And I can clearly see that the tracings, and I can also see how this tracing is relative to a few other ones. So this will probably be a good area um, some, from four to six seconds. And from there, you just push freeze after you've got the, after you optimize your, your gain, your scale, and your sweep speed, push freeze. And then you can just scroll to whatever tracing that you want. And here you can look here, this is the amount of seconds that it's actually recorded that you can scroll back and forth from when you freeze. So this is a lot of amount of seconds, like 35 seconds is a long time. So you can actually scroll back all the way to 35 seconds if you needed to, to capture a certain uh, frame that you wanted. So here I'm going to just uh, focus on one area or one tracing that I want. And so after you've, you've <clears throat> you figured out um, where you want to trace, just click the measure button on your machine and here I'm going to uh, LVOT tracing right here. Push on that and then go to the bottom of your LVOT tracing and then just trace out that measurement there. All right, so after you're done with that, the measurement will actually be on the top left of your screen. So for this specific application, it's 15, uh, centimeters for our uh, velocity time integral. All right, so that's the basics of how to use pulse wave Doppler. You can use this for a lot of things. Um, sometimes you don't even need to measure the whole thing. You can just measure the uh, maximum velocity. So here it'll also give you a maximum velocity of 93 centimeters per second or 0.93 meters per second. And that corresponds here. You see how this is right here. This peak right here is 0.93 meters per second. So if you go all the way over here, you can see that that is 0.93 meters per second. So um, a lot of times we just need the maximum velocity, but you can um, get a tracing of the, of the waveform itself, as in this example as well.